computer pausing. One. Hello and welcome to the Let's Chat podcast or the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour podcast or Mind Pirates extravaganza for blasphemy and piratism. You have turned into the right. You have turned into the right place for the right show. This is 103.9 FM Wozo Radio all day, all long, low power, just for you. A special show about science, scientism, the uh, philosophies of nature, religion, Pasifarianism, fallacies, sunk cost fallacies. We're going to be talking about all those in this show today. And we have a great cast of people to talk about them. We have our own Boudreaux, all the way from Kentucky. How you been? I've been well. Fantastic. How you guys? Fantastic. Fantastic. So good. And we're going to get into it. And we, of course, have our own Dread Pirate Higgs. Arr. Cool. And I'm Let's Chat. Your Tyrone Wells, feel free to contact me at my channel. We'll plug him at the end of the show. But before we get into the meat and potatoes today, and we're going to do a full roundup, I want to say welcome back, Dread Pirate Higgs. And would you please welcome yeah. us through a noodly invocation? Absolutely. God be me, Captain, I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt water. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth me bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodliness for goodness sake. Mm. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking, for thou art with me. Thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog. My goblet runneth over. Truly, pasta and grog shall abide with me all the days of me life. And I shall dwell in the galley of the quab forever. Wrong. Oh, man. man. Speaking of like spending some time in the valley of the quab, Dread Pirate, you've been deep in the in the in a, a weird environment, but finally back safe and sound. Happy to see it. Where have you been, and how you been? Well, yeah. So I was up in Fort St. John, uh, and then we got burned out of there. So they shut. The literally camp down burned out. Seven. Literally burned out. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it was smoky work. We were kind of on the border between the evacuation alert zone and the evacuation order zone. So they just decided to shut the camp down, kick us out. So, yeah, so I took the opportunity to, you know, scoot on down home. Uh, I made it here on Wednesday. And then yesterday got the call to go up again because uh, they need uh, medics to... Uh, um, provide service for the firefighters on the front lines there so i'm gonna be their guy dread i have no idea how to follow that up with a topic more manly than that like i feel <laughs> i feel emasculated or if you want to talk about working out and football yeah you know yeah. how's your progressive overload coming this you know uh i got my, about uh, getting a jeep wrangler i, I actually Bongo, i, so I started together. driving up i started driving up right after the show here yeah Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I'll, I'll stop in, uh, I'll drive for uh, eight hours today, mm. and then I'll I'll do the remaining uh, six-hour drive to Fort St. John tomorrow. So. Very cool. And we appreciate the work. We've been seeing smoke even in the U.S. Like, if anyone wonders what's going on there, Dread Pirate's making sure it doesn't get too bad. That's, that's yeah. atheist. Well, you know, it was... Pacifarians in action. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. When I left Fort St. John, I you, you couldn't see 100 feet in front of you mm. and it took me driving south for four hours before i was out of the smoke wow four hours wow, wow, wow. driving wow wow, was, wow. That's, yeah it was crazy wow think about that that's crazy yeah crazy crazy half, speaking of half a million hectares in this one fire it's the mm. largest fire ever in bc's history uh half a million hectares you could fit two and a half cities the size of london england inside this area wow, wow. And you know, the crazy thing is I work in a, a, a site that deals with nothing but filtration. And when we hear like driving with smoke, alarm bells go up in our head of just like particle size. Yeah, yeah. What kind of suit, what can, what can we do to like help them out? We've had issues before right. where we had um, volunteers, not volunteers, consumers buy up all face masks during our COVID crisis and right. hospitals and hospices and teachers couldn't get access to them. And so what we said was, we have assembly lines here. We have means of making not only face masks, but make them better. Let's just produce them. So that way, you know, we can help our, you know, our community, but also we can, it was either make stuff 
for free for everybody or wait at home and scared as everybody else and not being able to do this work. So what we said is, hey, we can do critical work. Let us go to jobs. Let's keep these machines running. And we can make stuff for the tri-state area. And that's what we did. We just like quickly... Mm -hmm. And there's no other site like ours that's capable of completely switching all of our processing lines to doing stuff like that. Where, like, okay. We have a very flexible architecture. But right. So you don't have to do a lot of retooling? No, we don't. We don't. We're like very nice. broad with what we can do. We're a very high level and nothing specialized. And so we can move and modular cool. everything out. But <laughs> when we have that fire crisis, we're wondering like, is this something that we can get onto? Is it something we can get onto? There's other sites in... Uh, I, I don't know if I can say, it, but like in Washington area, that is probably better suited for distribution. But we're like we're we're still we're still making face masks. Like it's kind of a crazy thing, but we're trying to do whatever we can yeah. to help. What's interesting, the main point is, dread as a fire guy uh, and and emergency responder, and even in my capacity as like a science engineer, where all of our jobs are dedicated towards even civil engineering because you need roads, you need roads to move all this stuff around, right? And that's what Buja represents. All of our jobs are meant to counteract whatever God's plan is. <laughs> God says, I have I a plan. It. It's up to us to be like, we got to stop this. We got to come up with thwart him. We will thwart this plan for the interests of mankind. That's, that's yeah, yeah. the, the uh, uh, I'm ready to get this clip out. That's the true purpose of science is just thwarting God's plan at any cost. Boudreaux, speaking <laughs> of traveling, how you been, my world traveled buddy? <clears throat> I've, I've been well. I talked about Mexico Last last time, uh, it was blast. Uh, but I'm back and trying to get back into the swing of things. Uh, it's been an adjustment, but uh, yeah, it's been an adjustment, like in terms of like being able to flush a toilet, or I mean, or... being able to yeah, yeah, put toilet paper in a toilet and uh, you know drink like, the water. What is this? What is this? What, <laughs> just... Is this water? Yeah. Oh, I can just uh, drink yeah. it. It's bizarre. Just I don't know. Brush my teeth with it. It's just. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> cool. um, but dread. I got. Uh, I got. I gotta ask you, and maybe maybe Ty would know, but sure. uh, are you gonna change out your air filter in your car? Oh, I do mine regularly. That, I, have a, I have a scheduled PM for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, dry, yeah, dry I, I, smoke. yeah oh. I have mine on a scheduled thing too. Okay, but I should that's, think about it because yeah, I, that's a good idea. We should probably mm. get that done. And thankfully, the I mean, smoke isn't so bad here in Tennessee. Typically, what warrants it is when Kentucky <laughs> throws all of their bluegrass pollen down to our state, <laughs> right. and it just becomes unbearable to breathe. So I, <laughs> I wait until the beginning of winter as, as part of my six-month rotation to swap it out. That way, I don't replace it mid-spring, because mm-hmm. a filter needs to have sort of like a dust cake on, on top of it to be really effective. And if you swap it out when it gets really bad... It's going to be a while while stuff is just flaring through it before it actually builds up to its efficiency. It's really bad. Your bluegrass is bad. We've put them onto an SEM, like a microscope, to look at them and say, like, what does this pollen look like? And let me tell you something. Pollen from, like, a pine tree is like a beach ball. It's beautiful. It's colorful. It's got little little segments on them, but it's nice and smooth. You get pollen from, like, other kinds of grass. And it's like, okay, it's more, like, rod-like, but it's not. It's okay. Bluegrass is, like, a spiky angry pineapple that just sticks uh, to everything and it's uh-huh. like wow that's what's getting in my eye that's why my eye is so irritated that's what's getting on my shirt so if i touch it and then brush my shirt and then accidentally do this that gets in my eyeball too like, yeah pollen yeah. is bluegrass pollen is very evil come on i'm blaming eric for it's, that one it, it's i'm going with god's wrath right <laughs> <laughs> we, just blame god out- it's like yeah uh, if you can take credit, if you can give God credit, you can give God uh, blame as well, too, right? That's right. Uh, so we are going to catch up on an interesting topic that I had. Um, science versus scientists. And the reason why I bring that up is because it's always an interesting thing to talk to uh, religious people. I've had more conversations face-to-face with people. I'm just not recording them, but I have some friends who I've helped, and they've done the bulk of the work. But I've had some friends who I talk to on a regular <laughs> basis who recently come out as atheists despite being religious before i met them and all i'm giving them is like a good space to give questions to me or feedback on and one of the things i i now that we're more comfortable talking about like atheism what does it means and they have no shame with it is i go back to some of their excuses before when we had our conversations and they'll say you know i was more willing to just say science is proof of god because when I look at science, it seems to do nothing but support a grand plan. And when I ask in more clarity in those conversations, what did you mean when you said that? They say, you know what? 
now that I think about it more, I don't mean the science was proving it. I meant scientists were saying that it was a connection. And I thought, what a what a great epiphany for them to reach on their own merit. Because there's a big difference between saying, well, science says this versus, well, this scientist said this. Mm -hmm. Because you can have Christian scientists. And I want to know, have you guys ran into situations where people have made those claims? Have you made those claims in the past? And what do you think is the nuanced difference between the two? Dred, I'll throw this up to you. Is there a difference between a scientist saying something versus science saying something? Uh, of course, right? Because science is a methodology for uh, discovery, right? Mm. Uh, whereas science is, you know, you take James Watson for, you know, for example, you know, uh, Watson and Crick frame, mm -hmm. who, uh, you know, was uh, discovered the DNA molecule. DNA. Yep. And, you know, one day walking in uh, some trail, he came upon a, a frozen waterfall, fell to his knees and accepted the Lord. Right. You know, that that is not critical thinking. That's not thinking like a scientist. Right. That's just somewhere else right so i mean yeah it, you know and yeah so being a scientist doesn't give you 100 percent protection against crazy ideas right and i'd say dial it back a couple thousand years you would have scientists who first dis discovered how to make telescopes right and they would look at the stars and they'd be like wow look at all look at this giant carpet with pinpricks in it right and the pinpricks behind it are are heaven and I'm I'm just using what everything I'm aware of and the biases of my culture to try to interpret the world yeah. around me, right? And I have yeah. such a heavily bias towards this omnipotent power, omnipotent power, this like all powerful being that everything I'm seeing is contextualized with that without me being aware yeah. of my own bias. And so exactly. when Watson Crick, when he sees that waterfall, he's like, oh God. But like if he was in Egypt, he'd be like, oh, rah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. if it's literally exactly. anywhere else it'd just be a different thing yeah. right yeah. uh which is really exactly, important why yeah. we gotta we have to make sure we don't necessarily drive i think i would say this we need to drive culture away from being indoctrinated into religion because we start out without that bias but are given it to us during our upbringing so it's important yeah. to realize that we have all the faculties of having like this unbiased view of the world if we were just to hold on to it or and train it and develop it rather than being indoctrinated with like the starter pack of how the world works that isn't sound yeah. to begin with. Boudreau, well, you know, oh. and, and religion and science are are at odds. I mean, they're, they're not just non-overlapping magisteria. Hmm. They are the, the antithesis of one to the other hmm. by virtue of the fact that in, in religion, you already have the answer. Right, right. <laughs> Whereas in science, you're trying to discover it, right? And so if you already start with the answer, right, uh, as in religion, then that is how you will formulate uh, your your methodology for discovery because you've already got the answer. So but, I think but, those things are just fundamentally at odds with one another. I don't know, like, you know, call yourself a Christian scientist. I mean, that, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Boudreau, I'd like to get your thoughts on this. I'm going to put you on the hot seat a bit. You know, sure. religion and science is two different methods to figuring out stuff. The religious method, as told by other religion people, religious people, it's simpler because one, you already have the answer and the answer is God. Why isn't that the better method? If you follow Occam's razor, you have the simplest answer. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, yeah, you, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to pull up Occam's <laughs> razor, which I think it's a, kind of a stretch to use it in this case. But um, yeah, you know, I I, I, I agree with, with Dread Pirate that, you know, you're really talking about uh, already having the answer and and uh, backing it up with, you know, interpretation of text, right? Know, turning to a page and just saying, well, I already know the answer. So when this was written, this is what it means. Right. Um, whereas, yeah, uh, science and the scientists that do it, I mean, are uh, constantly improving and 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 uh, in some cases disproving what someone else had thought. Right? right. Uh, you know, the 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 pin pricks in a blanket. You know, uh, the, the understanding of, you know what is the center of the universe and all that. I mean, the the, the kind of the science goalpost keeps moving, but it's mm -hmm. moving in the right direction. Right. Right. And it's based Progress. on. Right. Yeah, yeah, progress. And it's based on evidence and it's based on our understanding, the tools we have. Um, whereas the other side has, you know, this kind of ironclad 
uh, uh, protection uh, called faith, where you, you know, you have, you can't doubt it. Mm. Um, in fact, doubting it gets you in trouble, right? Right. Um, so, it, it, yeah, it's a not, it's not a very good standard, as you said uh, before the show, uh, to use to to get to to truth. Um, right. It's, I mean, good point. Yeah, Dred, I want to throw it out at you. I also, I was just going to say just quickly that it, it seems curious that um, that people would even try to justify religion through science because, you know, you remember right. uh, Hebrews 11, 1, right? It says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. So the whole premise of faith is the exact opposite of what, the uh, discovery is through sciences. So why even bother? I, I can't explain that. I can't explain that. I can't explain that. But I want to just make one point clear before I leave this YouTube comment bait still in the water. And that is <laughs> that there's sort of a misinformation campaign that religion has against science. And, and it goes with even the principles that science uses to determine good arguments and bad arguments are summarized and flanderized to the point where they're just absurd when they're put into religious hands and then used to express, uh, explain to the general public how science argumentation works. And one of them is Occam's razor, which is not a creed for the simplest answer is the best answer. And this goes no. without saying that God is a simple answer. In fact, he's the most mm -hmm. complex thing you can bring up in a conversation. Right. But Occam's razor has never been the simplest answer is the most correct. It's no. the one that makes the least assumptions is yeah. the correct yeah. answer. And what That's you have right. with religion is a multitude of assumptions of, well, it's my God, it's this text, it's this being, it's this powerful, it's this, this was the miracle, and it doesn't matter if you can't test it, it does, it is what it is, and I'm right, and everyone else who says otherwise is wrong, and we don't have to test it, and we're just assuming all of that is true, versus science is just like, I'm not making assumptions, I'm just only making the claim up to the amount the empirical evidence can support. And between those two methods, you have a system that makes very little assumptions, if any at all. If anything, it's a hypothesis that we can test, and we're testing the hypothesis itself, versus our entire castle, entire car house of cards built where every card is it's an assumption uh, from the very foundation to the very top. That's yeah. one of the things I hate about Occam's Razor. And then you ask Dread Pirate, why is it that religion cares about proving things with science? Is because religion chases trends, and we know this. Uh, it, it borrows other people's holidays. It, it changes sure, that yeah, power right. dynamics. It will always go towards the path towards most popularity because that gets the more people in the pews or more people sure. joining your congregation. And what's been cool back in the Mesopotamia area? Not science. No one cared about science back then. People were, you know, eating poop off the ground and like giving babies without washing their hands. They're just like, I don't believe in germs. I don't believe in this. And then science came along. It's like, oh, medicine. Ah, shelter. Oh, okay. There's cool things that come with this that increases our quality of life. That's so good that we can't ignore it. And now we have this thing where now religion needs to be supported by science because they're one and the same thing, right? Like God must want us to have electricity and telescopes and warm houses and, and MP3 players and all this stuff. And we have to now broadcast our message on websites because God needs a TikTok yeah. account. <laughs> it's <a great laughs> followers. And stuff it is, like I, you're absolutely right, Ty, that uh, religion will so often take credit for uh, social advances that were... Yep. Accomplished through secularism, right? Uh, you know what I mean. And just unabashedly, just take credit for it. You know, but like uh, you know, accepting homosexuals or ending slavery right. or you know whatever. And they say, well, you know, it's because uh, we're a Christian nation and we're all about love. And uh, no, right, 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 no. right. <laughs> right. So there was a. I remember when I was in Knoxville and the Atheist Society showed up at a, a. I think it was a gay pride parade, and we we're just like supporting and helping everybody there. And there was, in front of us, a Christian organization that was also supporting the gay pride parade, and they had posters of just like just be kind and love everybody. And in the sides, there was another Christian organization holding up signs saying, "All of you guys are going to hell. All of you guys are going to hell." And they had citations. And in my head, I was like, these guys are a better representation of the faith that they are followers of, but the people in front of us are a better representation of people, right? 
And, yeah. and while you can have that faith and be a good person, why have the faith in the first place? Because that the people on the sidelines are the best representation of that. And if anything, they just need to like get over that hangup. But if yeah. there was ever a question, these guys have citations, you guys don't. Yeah. There's no yeah. phrase in the Bible that says, just be kind and love everybody. Like that's going to be a hard thing to find. <laughs> I, I, I would dare people to find that. But I can yeah. say you can find the phrases where you guys are going to hell if you sweep with another man. Uh, these people are my chosen people. You guys aren't like that. Yeah. That's well, that's well cited. It's anyway. cherry. It's cherry picking. It's, mm. it's like oh, yeah. using the New Testament and, instead of the yeah. Old Testament. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's even worse than that, right? Because mm. uh, you know, uh, religious people are good by virtue of the reward they get or the punishment, right? Whereas people, uh, otherwise, you know, secularists and humanists are are good for its own sake, right? You know, mm. like I want to. I think uh, I think the latter is a more virtuous quality mm. than the former by by that yeah. i do want to bring up what i think is the tragic situation behind this because we can i it's always fun talking to other atheists about like isn't this silly it is silly it is silly it is silly but there's a sad component too in that the we've lost every single person that's a scientist that becomes a christian scientist right or someone that's truly interested in stem but isn't able to fully utilize their critical thinking capabilities because they've just been so inundated with this bad dogmatic thinking style or holding on to these terrible methodologies that give them this cognitive bias that interferes with their ability to come up with true conclusions because they're holding on to the conclusions that are comfortable or the ones that they want to have or they're so popular that they can espouse unfortunately misinformation people because they want this thing to be true i find that to be tragic because we lose an opportunity to have in my mind more luminaries in this world and as a result, we we just lose the capacity of what they could share with the world. Um, I I can make an analogy behind this. There's a lady named Helen Keller. If you don't remember her, she's a lady who had meningitis when she was like 19 months old, became deaf and blind, and everybody wrote her off and just said, you know what? It's it, she's she's already a woman in the early 1900s. Like, who cares what she's gonna do? But she she worked really hard. She learned how to read. She learned how to write. She learned how to speak. And her her books are so eloquently made. And and she wrote plays. Like she she had dictates on political matters. Like she wrote on like very heavy subjects in a very well mannered tone. And her biggest regret that she says in a lot of her speeches, I just wish I could speak well. Like it's not even I wish I could write better. I could see more books or I can do or I could hear. She's just I wish more people had the capability of hearing what I had to say in a manner that they could appreciate it, because I understand that there's a detriment between how I communicate and how other people can appreciate that. And I thought, how tragic is that to to extend that to scientists who could have a lot to say but have this religious rhetoric as their communication standard and can't espouse true science because they are inhibited by Jesus walking on water and they're a physicist. Yeah. It's just like, it's you can't, you can't have those two right? in the same ballpark. What's up? Yeah. What do you think, Dred? Yeah, no, I agree. It's having a filter that everything goes through that does not conform with uh, reality, right? It's, uh, it's wishful thinking. I it's think wishful I think, thinking, yes. I think Dawkins even uh, referred to it as kind of like a a, a form of schizophrenia, you mm -hmm. know, where you know Monday through Friday they go in, they are critical thinking, they are doing, you know, the good science, and then you know Sunday, uh, it's almost like the show Severance. Something in their brain mm. switches, and now all mm. of a sudden they yeah, suspend. Yeah. Um, and the shame is. Dread, you, Dread, and and Eric, you both can do this. Like, you can watch Star Trek and enjoy Star Trek, right? You can watch yeah, a Star yeah. Wars movie and enjoy a Star Wars movie. Like, we can suspend our disbelief. It's a suspension of disbelief, yeah, yeah. yeah. And appreciate. But, but at least things. I know I'm doing it. At least I know I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 I'm not that's, saying I'm not saying Data is a real guy or Captain Picard is a real guy. You know, or, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna transport down. You know, like, you know I get it. <laughs> and that's the scary thing it's still scary and it's both tragic because you can train a person in such a way that they don't realize 
how to turn on or off their disbelief, right? You can train them to yeah. uh, but always basically have it sort of in this halfway state where it's kind of half on and off and flickering. And you just think, man, I wish I could help you out and just like flick that thing off and show you, you have control of this. You don't lose, you don't lose anything in your religion by realizing that it's fiction, right? You can still appreciate it. I still love Christian music. I still think there's something to be said about public speaking that we can learn from pastors. I still think that there's really good morals that we could learn from how people back in the day thought they should treat each other. But I don't consider it real gospel from a God given to us. Like, in fact, I find that to be more empowering because it means we can take that as a template and approve upon it. And we can use the scientific method to improve about a lot of these rules that we came up with how to treat each other. We can make that better. In fact, we already do now. But until we recognize that, we're stuck at a certain pace. And I want to be able to accelerate how we treat each other rather than stay in the stay at pace. Like, let's get rid of yeah. the fat and get back to being better people. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, uh, for me, it's the appeal of uh, Pastafarianism is the eight, I'd rather you didn't. So, you know, it's not right. dogmatic. Right. It's guidelines. And, you know, if you, if you can't do them all the time, well, do them as best you can when you can, right? Yeah. Yeah, I really did like that list. That was a really, really good list. I've always liked structuring morals as don't, don't, don't force yourself to be good. Just don't be bad. Like, don't purposely hold, slow us down, but you don't have to push us forward, right? Like, because if it's morally, if you have to morally push me forward, then you're just being obedient when you're being good, right? Rather... And I don't want obedience. I want people well, who can it like... generally leads to hypocrisy as well, right? Yep, 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 yep. Because, because then you, uh, when you do things that are contrary to the commandments, yes, then yeah, you're you're a sinner now, right? <laughs> want to make yeah. a quick mention hey, before we do? Is it uh, what's the timer on? Uh, do you have to do a half show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do a half show okay. right now. But I just want to wish both you and uh, Boudreau. Happy Father's Day. I hope you guys Yay. enjoy Sorry, it. Man. Enjoy your time off. Uh, tomorrow, we also got Juneteenth. Enjoy that holiday as well. A well-deserved. I don't know if you got uh, Juneteenth in Canada. Juneteenth. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Emancipation of Slaves Day for okay. U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That oh, was okay. finally made a federal holiday. Um, yeah, we'll, right take, we'll take a break. Coming right back after the show, we're going to be talking about sunk costs and sunk ships. On the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, 103.9 FM, all day, all long, low power. Welcome back to the show. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, 103.9 FM. You're listening to this in Knoxville, and we are here to talk about science, religion, uh, superstitions, pasifarianism, uh, truths and facts and fallacies. And we're going to be jumping into a topic called sunk cost fallacy. Now, Bujo, love to hear what you think about this. Have you ever heard of the sunk cost fallacy before? Uh, I've heard of sunk cost. Okay. Uh, in economics. Um, but no, I'm not familiar with this. At least I don't remember I'm familiar with this. Have you they heard about... Call it the, they, they also call it the Concord fallacy. Ooh, ta- oh, okay. I'm interested okay. in this story. Talk to me. Uh, you remember the, the, the big plane, the Concord? Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, they put a lot of money into it. They kept putting money into it over years and years and years mm. uh and it still didn't succeed uh and when that finally that big crash uh happened they finally put an end to it but that that was a sunk cost where they just kept throwing good money after bad money right um, to, uh, to no good end um and so that's why the sunk cost fallacy is that shared name, the Concord fallacy. I have a, I have a real world example I'll share as well. And thank you for that. Cause mine's also economic, Boudreaux and Eric. So I like a game called Dance Dance Revolution. Have you ever heard of that game before? Yeah, yeah. Dread, Me have you either. ever seen Dance Dance Revolution before? Boudreaux, yeah. you wanna describe it? Yeah, well, and I've never owned it, but it, don't you have a pad on the ground sure that do. acts as a controller, right? Yes. You step on it and you have yeah. to hit the buttons and a. So it's exercise, but it's a game. It's like exercise, oh, yeah. yeah. And they'll have music and they'll have arrows and you're supposed to time your button presses with your feet on the pad with what's on the screen. Oh, okay. So it's almost like you're dancing. Right. And, the, and the game gets progressively more complicated as you get better at it. 
to the point where if you're right. in high school, that's like the coolest thing. Like the only yeah. way you can score cool points is being like, I beat this game on this difficulty. And people will be like, this guy is a cool guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that was my high school experience. And so I am unpacking stuff from underneath my bed. I open up a suitcase and nothing but old games and old consoles are in the suitcase. And I'm thinking, wow, fantastic. I even have an old dance pad and a dance dance revolution disc and i put it into this old console i have called a ps3 and it says it can't read the game because it needs a ps2 to play and i have a ps3 and it's not backwards compatible so i'm like okay that's fine let me just see if i can download the game on pc and i'll and and it should be for free right so i download step mania which is the free version of dance dance revolution now but my dance pad is for a playstation it's not for a pc so i said okay let me just buy a converter so i buy a converter that converter didn't work and i waited like two days for it to come in and i'm still excited to play the game i'm like okay that's fine i'll just try a different converter i buy a different converter that one doesn't work and i'm like okay i'm now like 20 bucks in what do i need it's like i need to buy Mm -hmm. a dance pad that's usb compatible so i can connect it to my pc so i buy one turns out it's the wrong kind of pad because my pad has foam in it and it has a USB or it has a PS2 dongle. And I'm like, I still don't have a PS2. I bought the wrong thing. Okay, what do I need to buy now? I need to buy a USB pad for my PC. So I bought another pad. I'm now like 140 bucks into this whim of playing a game I didn't even want to play in the first place that much. <laughs> and now I'm kind of upset because I had to buy the pad without the foam. So in order for me to get the same kind of rugged quality, I have to go buy foam. So now I'm like in in uh, Duck Durham, Durham's, which is like this sports fitness place that sells yoga mat foam. And I'm thinking like, oh, this is like 40 bucks for just foam. I'm just like, but I need it for the dance pad. And I already bought two adapters and I already got it on my, on my USB stick. Wow. And so I'm just like, Ugh. Okay, all right, maybe I should just buy a PlayStation 2. Because at this point, I've already spent enough money that I'm just like, let me just get the PlayStation. So I go online and they don't sell PlayStation 2s for cheap. You have to buy basically full prices if it was like 2008. And I'm just like, you know what? I don't even like the music that much. (laughs) I'd rather just learn how to actually dance using YouTube. I'm kind of done. I'm kind of done. And I can't return any of these things. I have three dance pads in my home now. I have three dance pads and I can't use any of them. I have two US, I have two PS2 to USB adapters that I have nothing to use for. And Amazon's not taking them back. They're like, we don't, we haven't sold these things in the last 20 years, sir. Just like, fair enough. I guess I, I'll just donate them or give them to one of my coworkers who has a working PlayStation 2. But that's some can, cost. Can I contribute to your your uh, absolutely? Absolutely. Yeah, I just I, I might have you go down another rabbit. My brother formed a company hmm. that makes adapters for old uh gaming don't systems dare. don't you convert dare. some to usb <laughs> uh, no i'm serious In fact, i have one here um i he seriously my brother at least it's worth me asking him the question of what's the most reliable way of doing this and my brother might tell me you know this or that but seriously he is in the game people know him for it he makes uh the bliss box and the fork lay and they wow. both convert uh, basically every oh, like, no. atari all the way down to the coleco <laughs> Um, I don't know how how newer systems he's gone, but <laughs> something anyway. you need to know about Eric is he's an enabler. And if you haven't seen yes. behind yeah. his behind his office, he's just like, oh, you just got off a of heroin. Oh, I have a cousin who's yeah. like just doing a discount on heroin. It's it's amazing. Yeah. You should you should I should I should get you in touch with them. He's like, no, I got off. He's like, no, 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 let me just. No, I think I can I can help you out here. I can help you out here. First one's free. <laughs> let me get you hooked up. Yeah. So why, awesome. so why do I bring up sunk cost fallacy? Because I think there is a really big connection between it and religion, or at least how people can buy into, well, I've already done this my entire life. Why, why give this up now? Right? Well, what, what harm yeah. would it be if I just like, instead of like staying in this pool, just go down a little bit deeper, because it's just one more inch, right? And so one of my friends who I talked to who's 40 four years old now has been a christian since he was 42 right for 42 years and only in the last two years since i've known him has been willing to like step away from that him and his wife him and his wife one of the biggest things he has a hard time doing is recognizing the labels that he has to give up are like some of the hardest things for him to do because he knows he's not a christian but he doesn't want to call himself not a christian or irreligious or Definitely the A word, even though he knows there's nothing inherently wrong with them. 
and he recognizes on an intellectual level that I am these things. I am an agnostic atheist, but it feels terrible because his entire life he was thinking these are worse than the devil, right? And right. the the cost for him to give up the comfortable labels that he has that he doesn't feel like he even has a place in is too great for him. And so he just thinks, what would be what would be the harm? If I just maintain, if like I'm not an atheist, I'm not a, I'm not religious, but I am an atheist, but I'm going to still keep calling myself a Christian in this sense because I've already came all this way. Like it's up it, this. It's hard for me to pull a sunk cost tie to this without taking up like an extra ten minutes. But like the entire idea is, he just can't. You can't just step away from it because you're you've bought into the system so greatly your entire life that it's really difficult to walk away from. And even when you realize that the thing that you bought is snake oil, you're just like, well, I'm already here. <laughs> It's already uh, you know, warm. Ty, you, you could actually just shift that a little bit. Talk I, to I smoked. I smoked for thirty-four years. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were in the sunk cost fallacy thing, right? Well, I, I've been smoking all this time. Why give it up now? Right, <laughs> right, right, right. right. I, like I'm one of those. You know, I'm the kind of person. If I'm sitting in a movie theater and the movie sucks, mm. I leave. Wow. If I'm reading a book and I don't get into the book. I put the book down and I never go back to it. Right. I mean, Good for you. Th those you're, are those little mental trains <laughs> that people have to get themselves <laughs> used to. Right. Right. Because it trains you to give up on things that uh, you you don't want to invest in anymore. Right. Right. I wish more people would do that. Uh, Bujo, have you, are you also a quitter? Like, are you, quitter. yeah. Are you good at quitting? Yeah. Yeah. Good no, I, 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 I've thought about that with TV shows. Like, mm. you know, I mean, there's so much streaming content out there that you can't watch it all. Right. You shouldn't watch Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Uh, so I've been very stingy with, with, um, you know, kind of my, right. my rules. Uh, I'll start, I'll start a show and I'll just be like, uh, no, nah, not feeling it. I'm yeah. Not. Yeah. There's a, there's a yeah. praying sort of capitalistic nature that sort of takes advantage of the sun cost fallacy to keep people hooked in. And it's one of the reasons why I checked out of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, I'm done with it now. Since Endgame, like, I'm like, that was like my ticket to leave. And they're like, stay tuned for Ant-Man 2. It's like, no, no, no. You you did all the things. There's no more bad mm -hmm. guys out in this world. I don't care about them anymore. Like, you took the biggest one down. I'm sure you guys have it handled from here on out. It's like, well, yeah. we have Shang-Chi and we have the next Spider-Man movie. And we have this like, dude, no, like, you don't you realize that you ended it? It's called Endgame. So, like, when that happened... I spent 17 years hooked on this soap opera of superheroes since Iron Man all the way to Endgame. And I'm like, I'm done now. And I can't be bought back in. However, every single time a new Marvel movie comes up, there's the the zeitgeist of YouTube thumbnails and commercials coming about and people saying, you got to watch this, you got to check it out. And I could see maybe this is pretty close to how it is when someone steps out of religion. And mm -hmm. Maybe it's like, oh, well, all my what are my friends doing on Sunday? They're busy. I can't play with them. Or it's like, okay, so I'd have to get new friends. Yeah. Or yeah. I drive down the road and I see the billboards on the churches and they're all saying, Jesus loves you still. Jesus wants to save you. Or when Easter comes by and it's like, oh, this is a holiday. Can I celebrate this holiday? What's going on? Or Christmas comes. How? Which songs am I supposed to sing? Like everything is reminding me of religion when I have that religious mindset or context that it's like the hooks that keep pulling me back in. Because I'd have to completely readopt an entirely new worldview if I was religious and I had to leave it. And that takes a lot of effort. So it hasn't harmed me, as Boudreaux says, as far as I can see, it hasn't harmed me at all. Why don't I just keep sticking with it? Especially if all these hooks and enablers are nearby me. The culture that I'm in can really dictate how hard it is to leave religion. And I feel like Suncost is like a very apparent swamp to get stuck in when it comes to like dogmatic thinking, right? So it's not just a matter of just realizing you're wrong. It's like, it's, it's beyond that. It's just, you live in a culture that's maintaining a momentum, right? And you, it takes a lot of effort to fight against it. So, well, so yeah, surely... and, and like you say, I mean, it's, it isn't just sunk cost, but it certainly factors huge mm. in that whole, that whole scheme of things, right? Right. Um, because like you say, it's, it's your, your friends all of a sudden aren't around uh, right. because they're doing their religious stuff. So there's a lot of kind of cultural factors that are, you know, uh, working together there to uh, uh, make it difficult for a lot of people to leave their religions. I mean, you think about uh, um, the the um, the clergy project, mm. you know, 
mm-hmm. where, uh, you know, pastors and priests are, you know, so ensconced in their milieu that, you know, it's virtually impossible to believe. And without the assistance of like-minded individuals, uh, they would probably never do it. They would just continue down that road by virtue of the fact that that's all they've ever, that's all they've ever known. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's their career, right? I mean, they've, that's they've, their career, they've studied exactly. it. Yeah, I've, I've heard. That's how I mean, they bought their house, you know, and yeah, you know, put their kids through Christian school and all that. What, what yeah, about yeah, what about sure. a spouse though, too? I, I yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you you sure. you want to leave, but then you think about, well, I, I'm going to get divorced, or I'm going to leave, or I, you know, yeah. how do you? I've heard a lot of stories of people struggling with that. Um, yeah, and I mean that's that's a pretty hard. Um, yeah, and what a terrible situation to be in, where it's like. You would think a God, if it existed, would help with that, right? It's like, oh, no, by the way, I'm, you don't have to destroy your marriage. I'm here. It's like, oh, okay, thanks for that. sending me that email, God. I really appreciate it. It's like, yeah, 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 my bad, my bad. My bad. Anyway, back to my other important things I got to do. It's just I'm being intellectually honest, and that might destroy my marriage. Like, I'm not even cheating. I'm not even, yeah. I'm not even doing any of the evil commandment things that you're saying that I shouldn't do. Like, I'm just being intellectually honest, and that could be what could jeopardize this long-term arrangement that I set up with a person that I love more than anyone else in the world. What a terrible situation to find yourself in. It's the devil testing you, Ty. It's the devil (laughs) testing you. On God's command. It's just, it's just, (laughs) it's just the weird thing. It's just like, God, devil, stop testing me. It's like, God wants me to do this. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He he plays bets. Feeling feeling like Job. Yeah. 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 I'm just doing what God is allowing me to do. Like if I couldn't do it, if I, God didn't want me to do this, I wouldn't be able to do it. It was like, okay, what a terrible situation, God. You're still the manager in this situation. I want to, next time the devil tempts you, just say, I want to talk to your manager <laughs> <laughs> and get on the yeah. line with God and be able to help you out. Guys, um, I wanted to bring up that one extra point that you said where you uh, mentioned, Dred, that when you are watching a movie and you don't like it, you walk out of the movie. When you're reading a book, you stop reading the book and you walk out. What would it take for a Christian to read the Bible from beginning to end and put down the Bible and be like, yeah. no, this isn't the God who I thought? Because when you think about it, a lot of atheists become atheists because they read the Bible. I'm not sure if that's a similar story for people on this call. But for me, yeah. the kicking, I was already on the, ooh, I'm not really sure about this religion thing. And I was taking a class in ethics in college, and I was a very hardcore Christian back then. And like my first test was, how do you know good things or bad things? And I'm just putting down Bible quotes and I'm very confident with what I'm doing. And I bid poorly on the test. And so I said, how dare you fail me on this test? Let me just look in the Bible and pull out these quotes. And in con- in, in the quotes themselves, yes, I felt justified. But the context that they're in, I was like, ooh, 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 let me find a better quote. Let me find a better story, a better parable. And I'm like, let me just read this from beginning to end. And I'm like, oh no, there's like a lot of things because at that point I now had a fundamental understanding of what it meant to treat people well and the consequences of my actions. And I'm realizing God's going about this all wrong. And I'm like, why am I thinking that? You know, like how can I, as a human being think maybe drowning all the people in the world isn't the best way to go about spreading a message of how good and kind you think a certain group of family is maybe you could just like, talk to them um drowning babies is never a good reason <laughs> it should never be your a plan god and i thought you know i couldn't i read through the whole bible i read it i read it again and then i stopped after i realized like i can only cherry pick um certain chapters and and i couldn't appreciate it at all but what would it take for a Bi- uh, a christian to read the bible and do the same thing that dread you did when you're watching a bad movie and how good would it be if we could all be quitters in that regard so right. dread it, on it that is, i mean it's a it's a stigma right to be a, mm. to be a quitter mm. and and i think people are just tied up in this idea that you got to follow through on something at at all there costs is, yeah. regardless of your happiness or your joy right. you know that uh, once you made a commitment it's like you know, you have to follow through it. No, you don't. Right. <laughs> like, and that's what you got to learn. Right? And, it's just no, no, no. You can actually look out for your own self-interest. Uh, right. You don't have to be an altruist about, you know, uh, your time mm. uh, or your interest or your dedication or anything like that. You you get to, I mean, you're here once. You get to pick the stuff you like. I love the it. The people you want to be with, the mm. things you want to do. Mm. and uh 
yeah it's I'm that's glad, where you should be at i'm glad i'm spending this time with you because this is where i want to be at least on my sunday mornings bujo what do you think about the idea of value of being a quitter yeah well i i think well no First thing I'll point out, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got a hook for my daughter and father's uh, day on camera. So uh, that's that was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got right on. Um, I, I do <laughs> think it's important to make a distinction here because I made the joke, oh, you're a quitter. But I'm just like you, Dred. Uh, I, you know, I quit, quit smoking cigarettes, too. I smoked for 10 years. You know, best decision I ever made. Mm. Um, we do have to frame it, though, a little bit because I think there is a whole other side of this of like, you know, finishing high school. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. Right. sitting in freshman class going, you know what, this really just, I don't love this. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to just, yeah. So you frame it in such a way, if we're talking about something that is truly entertainment or truly something just for your free time. Yes, absolutely. You know, like you're saying, know when to just say, I can be doing something better. Don't right. feel like you're bought into it. But obviously when we're talking about, you know, career minded things and and uh you know trying to run a certain distance or speed or something like mm. that you know yeah here's where you flip flip it and, and now don't be the quitter but so so those are very different and i think it's obvious probably sure. to everyone but, but yeah and, and from this context speaking of contextualization i hear when someone says i quit i'm, I'm what i'm hearing is i have a standard for my time and yes. this falls below that go. standard and like you said bujo i can do better things that are more rewarding with to me as and as dread says with my time with the things that i enjoy doing the things that i appreciate more than spending on this and i can say it's this, yeah. the equivalent would be like i could eat junk food all day or i can actually have a meal you know that's mm -hmm. like nutritious healthy i can cook it myself and it could be more filling for me i'd rather do that than eat a, a 40th bag of cheetos you know mm -hmm. like <laughs> you like got a certain day one's flack and the other one's fire and i'd rather have the fire um yeah. i i I a lot of I would appreciate it if there were more quitters or people who had more standards for their empathy and how they treat people and what they allow to go into their minds that help them dictate true things from false things. If they yeah. were and and we need more quitters of that capacity, more people who have high standards of that capacity, particularly in the religious sector. And I would say also yeah. atheists can learn it too, but scientists and science, that would be my first distinction that people should start to 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 be aware of it has nothing to do with religion just be aware that there are scientists that say thing and then the science the science model that indicates something it, because it's not an amount a month anthropomorphized being it just yeah. it's a model that suggests something or works in a certain way and we can come up with better models and nothing's ever definitive but it does help us progressively get to more useful understandings of the world that we live in and that's the distinction between the two. It's not just someone talking. It's a model that anyone can uh, uh, appreciate and work in. And we need more people to work in that model. Dred, any last words? It's also, it's also about uh, being more uh, conscious of the choices you make, mm. right? And taking yeah, that takes work. responsibility yep. for the choices you make, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If you just say, well, that's the way I was raised or... I've been doing this forever, you know. Right. That's not making a choice. That's not even acknowledging you have one. Right. Um, right. When yeah. you take the responsibility and say, ah, "I may be where I am now, but I make a decision on where I'm going to put my foot next." Right. Right. Taking accountability of your own life. Put my head next. Right. Whatever. Yeah. And Boudreau, finishing high school. <laughs> finishing high school. A good thing. High school. Yeah. So like what we came up with was a really cool model of like, hey, you should learn how to quit more. And Bujo was like, actually, let's take that model and refine it. And we're like, oh, let's take that model and refine it. Let's talk more about standards. We got closer to a, a better explanation of how we should treat other people and how to take control of our lives. Like that's yeah. science. Imagine if that was a process that was going on for thousands and thousands of years. It has been. Mm, let's use that right. process more than the one that hasn't changed and was just like don't quit i put it in a book and i i gave it to you on a golden <laughs> piece of metal. like no we can do better than that we did better than that in like a five minute conversation we can take any of those commandments come with, with better versions of it lickety split so science is good it's in our interest because we can improve upon it that's the whole value of it so it's not perfect to begin with it won't be perfect maybe ever but it will get better and we're already at a state where it's better than the dogmatic rules that we have already. So why not use them? Why, why not use the best tools that we have available to us? And listen to the science rather than the scientists, because we can all be scientists. And so we should all be cooperating with each other and arguing against each other using science, right? All right. 
Boudreaux, anything we should check out before next week? Yeah, can I um, share a, 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 a quick little um, example of, of how scientists can fail? Go for it, go for it, go for it. Yeah, so this in particular, a data scientist, which is something I'm seeing in my, my um, uh, world of, of engineering where everyone loves data and they love spreadsheets and pivot tables and they want to make you know, graphics and all this. Someone put a graphic together. Okay. For fatal crashes in the United States, about 40,000 or so um, fatal crashes every year. And they found that half of the fatal crashes every year, about half, they were traveling, a vehicle was traveling 91 miles an hour or faster. Wow. Okay. Think about that. Okay. <laughs> safest, safest uh, highways in the United, safest roads in the United States are interstates. And those are about the only places where you can even go 91 miles an hour. And we're saying half of all people, half of all fatal crashes are happening 91 miles an hour faster. This bounced around a bunch of my colleagues and everyone was like, this can't be right. And within a few minutes, a guy went in, William, a uh, summit guy, went in and just did some, some checking on the database. Turns out there are two codes in the database for speed, uh, 998 and 999, which means something like none detected or unknown. So this data scientist was including all of the unknown speeds in got this it. in this graph got it, <laughs> because got they it. were greater than 91. They were okay. just codes right. for something else. Cool. Um, know your data. Understand the metadata. Um, yeah. Sorry, that was a little long winded. No, no, that's a great example. example. It's yeah. a great example yeah. because we figured out what the problem was and we didn't use religion to solve it. Like we didn't pray yeah. in a circle and figure that out. We use science to figure out a scientific problem. And that's yeah. that is what makes science so good because you can use it to fix itself. It's yeah. like designed. It's, it's a self-correcting mechanism. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's exactly that. And so like when we have a problem with scientific data, we analyze it scientifically. We talk about it in a scientific nature and we fix it using more science. And we're like, oh, it's now better. And we can test that. Fantastic. Isn't science awesome? It's not, a, it's not a, 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 a weird obelisk that just stands in the middle <laughs> of a pyramid somewhere. It's a process that we can all work on together. And it's multifaceted and it's... it's uh, just so cool. It's innovative. It's interesting. It's it's intriguing. And Dread Pirate, do you have any words that you'd like to share with us? Well, I, if uh, anyone's interested, you can check out my uh, YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T. I've been doing weekly benedictions on there through the church. I've also been exploring some logical fallacies and cognitive biases. I just recently did a short video on confirmation bias. Ooh. And uh, and then previously I'd done one on um, on ad hominem uh, versus argument. So uh, or challenging belief. Um, the the difference between uh, going after somebody mm. or going after what they believe. Uh, right. So yeah, yeah. So I've been uh, up in my content a little bit and spending more time on the channel getting lots of subscribers so uh, i feel good about that so yeah check it out congratulations and any of my subscribers feel free to subscribe to mind pirate his quality content has always been great and um happy father's day for today happy june for guys. tomorrow mm -hmm. and everybody have an opportunity to celebrate get outdoors and appreciate this one life that we might actually have and until then I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for coming to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. This is 103.9 FM, low power, Knoxville. Bye, guys. Love it. See you.